When I was first introduced to the Persona franchise with Persona 5 back in 2017, I could never have expected that it would end up being one of the greatest JRPGs that I've ever played. The story was incredible, the characters were fascinating and dynamic, and the battle system was entertaining with an impressive soundtrack to go with it. And with so many extra activities that I could take part in, I spent more than 120 hours during my first playthrough, which is a feat that would be difficult to pull off for even some of the greatest games in the genre. But Persona 5 managed to do this with near flawlessness. Jump to 2020 and Persona 5 Royal has now arrived here in the state, and all I could ask myself was how could Atlas improve upon what was already a legendary title in the genre, but I'm happy to confirm that they have done just that. If 2017's Persona 5 was the standard edition, then Persona 5 Royal is the extended cut, and it is absolutely deserving of that title and worth revisiting, as the experience this time around adds a whole new set of additions and changes to this edition that makes this game an even more incredible title. Now the primary plot for Persona 5 Royal really hasn't changed much during the first 80% of your playtime. The story centers around your character who goes by the codename Joker and follows his adventures as they play out over the course of about a year. Joker is put on probation for a crime and is sent to live in a small coffee shop, and while there he discovers that he has the ability to summon a powerful manifestation called Persona, and using his Persona is able to cross over into a realm called the Metaverse. Over the course of the next year, Joker makes many friends who can all call forth their own unique personas, and together they form the secret group called the Phantom Thieves. As the Phantom Thieves, their goal is to change the hearts of those who have a dark and twisted desires, and as the popularity of the Phantom Thieves grows, powerful individuals appear and attempt to stop them in not only the metaverse, but also the real world as well. The story certainly goes much deeper than that, but that's all I really wish to say without going into any main spoilers. Now, the newest addition to the main story centers around the characters of Akechi, Kasumi, and Muraki, who all appear throughout the main story, but once you have entered the new semester of the story, that's where it really spends a great deal of time focusing on these three characters. Now, Akechi was already a prominent character in the original Persona 5 game, but this time you will get a chance to see a somewhat different side to his character. Kasumi is a new student who arrives around the same time that you do and wishes to become a world-class ballet dancer, but is hiding a deep dark secret from her past that holds great significance on how she views herself in the present. And Maraki is a new guidance counselor for your school, and it is he who you talk to about your traumatic experiences that you will encounter over the course of the game. And there are several times throughout the game that you will see scenes where your fellow Phantom Thieves will actually go and speak to him on their own about their own problems. When it comes to gameplay, you will spend a great deal of your time jumping between the real world and the metaverse, and the majority of your time will be divided between interaction, exploration, and combat. In the real world, there are so many activities that you have a chance to experience over the course of your playtime, but as a high school student, you will find yourself having to go to class on a regular basis and have many exams that you will have to complete. Now, after school, you will also have the opportunity to go socialize with your friends, or maybe you want to choose to get a part-time job and earn some extra money, or maybe you want to go on some dates, or maybe you want to finish all the different locations or visit some shopping centers that you can visit that are spread all throughout the many different locations that you can visit. While playing, there are many dialogue sections that you can choose from during your interactions with both your friends and enemies, and depending on your responses, the path that you choose can have serious outcomes that can change the very direction that the story goes itself. Along with new characters added to Persona 5 Royal, there are also many new locations to explore, with one of these locations being the new Thieves' Den, which is a new interaction area that you can customize however you want visually, and is pretty much the main area that holds all of your collectibles that you will earn over the course of the game. Taking part in any of the many social activities that you will have access to will increase your social status, which is divided into five different categories, and this is very important because the higher your social statuses rise in different categories, the more individual activities that you can take part in with your friends, and the more time that you spend with them, the more your bond with them will grow, which will grant you access to a wide variety of perks that you can then use to aid you in combat. Now speaking of combat, that too has been granted a number of additions in this much expanded edition of Persona 5. While exploring in the metaverse, you will be able to encounter creatures called shadows that will change into personas that you will engage. Now a cool little toy that they have added in this game is a new grappling hook that allows you to perform a sneak attack on an enemy from a distance, but it also allows you to reach areas from a higher elevation. 
The combat in Persona 5 is based on a turn-based system, which grants you plenty of time to plant your actions one character at a time. But if you choose to, you can have it set so that your individual characters can fight on their own without you needing to have to give them commands. One of the coolest additions that was added to Persona 5's Royal is the addition of the brand new team attacks called Showtimes that allows two of your teammates to perform a choreographed super attack to deal serious amounts of damage to an enemy. During battle, you will have access to four different options to conclude a battle. You can either defeat the enemy straight up and gain experience, or if you manage to stagger them, you can have the option to either talk to them, and once you do, you can either demand them to either give you an item, or money, or in some cases, you can even ask them to join you and become a persona that you can then use in battle. Now, as you collect personas, you will then have access to use them in a multitude of different ways whenever you visit the area called the Velvet Room. It is here that you can not only strengthen your personas, but you can even use two or more different personas to create a powerful new one that can inherit powers that the two or more previous personas were used to create it. This can come in extremely useful in times because all personas when used in battle have specific strengths and weaknesses and knowing which personas to use in certain situations can make battles easier or harder to get through. Like most JRPGs, as you win battles, gain experience, and earn money, your allies' own personas will grow stronger and learn new attacks as well. And then you can take your money and purchase new weapons and equipment to aid you in battle. And like all great RPGs, level grinding is also fun to do here as well, as the area known as Mementos has returned. While exploring in the world, you can take on many assignments to change the heart of civilians, and in my opinion, Momentus is the best place to go if you're looking to level up fast, and just like everything else in Persona 5 Royal, it too has been greatly expanded on, granting you access to even more powerful Personas to battle than that you add to your ever-growing collection. And once you've completed the game, you can then take a great amount of the things that you have collected in your first playthrough and add them to your second playthrough in New Game Plus, granting you access to even more extra content. Now visually, the overall design and art style of Persona 5 hasn't changed at all in three years, but in my opinion it didn't need to as it was already an impressive looking game back in 2017. Mechanically, this game ran extremely smooth on my PlayStation 4 Pro, and at no point did I encounter any technical issues of any kind, which is a feat that even some of the best games that have come out during this generation have had a hard difficulty time pulling off. However, one of the greatest additions that I never would have believed that they could improve upon was the game's soundtrack, which before this, Persona 5 had already had one of the greatest soundtracks for a video game that I had ever heard, period. But with music being so important to Persona 5, and with the addition of brand new tracks, it elevates some of the new epic moments to stratospheric levels of enjoyment, which is something I thought was not possible. By now, I think you can understand just how excited and pleased I am with this game. When all is said and done, Persona 5 Royal made my second trip to the world of Persona 5 an unforgettable experience to what was already a wonderful experience back in 2017, and the fact that I was able to pick up the collector's edition this time around made every minute of gameplay and every dollar spent towards this adventure even more worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rather special day. Because Persona 5 Royal is truly something to behold. Now granted, back when the original Persona 5 came out, back in 2017, now I, 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 that was kind of a rather busy year for me, so I didn't have time to actually review it. And it was a rather extensive playthrough, especially being well over 120 hours. But if I had reviewed that game at that time, I undoubtedly would have given this game a 9.5 out of 10. And it easily joins the big five of being one of my top five favorite RPGs of all time. It sits at the table with games like Final Fantasy X and VII and Nino Kuni and of course Kingdom Hearts 2. It sits at that table. But now you jump to 2020 and Persona 5 Royal is even better. I have absolutely no complaints and even the small little gripes that I even had were Persona 5 Despite the fact that they are still in this game, the developers managed to add extras that actually made those flaws workable and easier to deal with, and heck, even welcoming. I mean, that's just nuts. So you know what? I can't give this game a 9.5 out of 10. And I've got to do something that, looking back, I haven't done this since October 27th, 2016. And that is why I believe 
that Persona 5 Royal is worthy of joining an exclusive club. A club that, up until now, has only had 12 members. But I think that very exclusive club has just now earned its 13th member. Which is why I am more than proud and honored to welcome Persona 5 Royal into the 10 out of 10 club. I cannot recommend this game enough. This is a game that is a must-own title for anyone who loves RPGs. And if you, for whatever reason, did not get a chance to pick up the original Persona 5, then you need to pick up this title. You just have to. That is why it is just... I, I love this game. I mean, heck, even the box, the, the back of the box says that this, we are here to take your heart. Well, this game, on its second try, absolutely did steal my heart. And that is my review for Persona 5 Royal. Now, if you happen to like this review, I would be more than happy if you give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to press the subscribe button because every subscription counts. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And I will see you next time.